Hi there. So in this video, we're going to discuss the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis induction. So here I have drawn a cell and I've drawn the cytoplasm and the plasma membrane. So when we talk about the extrinsic pathway, we're referring to the fact that this cell is going to receive a signal that comes from outside the cell that is going to tell the cell to die. So uh, first we're going to introduce some proteins inside the cell. And these are caspases, initiator caspases. So if you recall, caspases are a family of proteases. And when they're synthesized in cells, they are typically synthesized as a zymogen or as a proenzyme. And so caspase 8 and caspase 10, which are two members of the caspase family, they are um, proenzymes or zymogens and they're made in cells in, and they're kept in their inactive form. And uh, as we saw in a previous video, when we talk about the extrinsic pathway, uh, we introduced caspase nine, which is an initiator caspase. Uh, caspase nine being used in uh, the um, intrinsic pathway of apoptosis induction. Here, caspases eight and 10 are initiator caspases for the extrinsic pathway. So these pathways tend to use different uh, initiator caspases. So those are synthesized in the cell and they are kept in their inactive form. So now a signal is going to come from outside the cell. So to how, do many, how do cells receive signals from the outside world? They typically use receptors. And so here we're gonna have a protein on the plasma membrane of the cell. And this protein, uh, it's like a growth factor receptor or a cytokine receptor, is going to bind to molecules outside the cell and we're gonna call these death receptors. So there's a family of protein known as death receptors, which are found on the surface of many human cells. And those proteins can increase in levels if cells think that there might be something wrong with them. And so a death receptor is a protein that's going to engage a ligand outside the cell and that will send a signal into the cell to the initiator caspases to initiate apoptosis. So there are a number of different uh, death receptors in humans. And so he, I've given you three examples here. A protein called FAS, or the FAS receptor, uh, a protein called the TNF receptor, and a protein called the TRAIL receptor. So there, these are three examples of death receptors. They are found on the surface of some human cells. Uh, they can increase in levels if the cell believes it might uh, need to be targeted for destruction and it engages ligands outside the cell that will then signal into the cell to initiate our caspases. So let's talk about some of these ligands. The first one that engages the FAS receptor is a protein called a FAS ligand. So FAS ligand is a protein found on the surface of other cells, um, cells such as immune cells. And this is an example of juxtacrine signaling. So uh, if you recall learning about the different types of signaling, autocrine signaling, paracrine signaling, endocrine signaling, this is a juxtacrine signaling. So when we have a molecule on the surface of one cell interact with a molecule on the surface of another, sending a signal into that cell, that is an example of juxtacrine signaling. So the FAST ligand is found on the surface of cytotoxic T cells, so an immune cell. And when it engages, when the fast ligand engages the fast receptor, that can send a signal to initiate apoptosis. So that is one example. Uh, another example is this TNF receptor binding a ligand called TNF alpha. Now, if you are familiar with immunology, you've heard of TNF alpha. Uh, it is a inflammatory cytokine, a pro-inflammatory cytokine. In some instances, TNF alpha actually can engage the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis. Not all instances, in many instances, TNF alpha is just inducing inflammation. But in some care, in some cells, TNF alpha can induce apoptosis. So that's an example of a soluble molecule secreted by an immune cell that can engage a ligand that causes cells to undergo death. Another example is this molecule called TRAIL which binds the trail ligand, I'm sorry, trail receptor. Uh, and trail can come from any number of cells and the trail receptor can be found on a number of different cells and we're not gonna go into detail. But as long as you appreciate the fact that 
cells sec can secrete molecules that will bind to receptors on the surface of a cell signaling for the cell to undergo apoptosis. That's an example of the extrinsic pathway. So uh, this is paracrine signaling here when we have one cell releasing a soluble molecule locally to tell another cell to do something. So juxtaprine signaling, paracrine signaling can induce apoptosis in a target cell. And so when these ligands bind their receptors, that sends a signal into the cell, and we're not going to get into the steps into those signals right now, but that signal will go into the cell and be transmitted to those procaspases. And if you recall, procaspases, like um, the ones we've seen before, the way they activate is they become cleaved by a protease activity. And so these death receptors will, and we're not going to go into detail, will uh, activate a protease activity that will lead to the cleavage of procaspase 8 and procaspase 10. And so when these procaspases are cleaved, the inhibitory domain is uh, removed from them, and so now we are left with active caspase 8 and active caspase 10, and these can initiate apoptosis. I'm going to give you one more example of how initiator caspases 8 and 10 can receive a signal from outside the cell in order to initiate apoptosis. And in this example, we're going to talk about cytotoxic T cells. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, we go into detail on how cytotoxic T cells recognize uh, cells, uh, specifically virally infected cells or even cancer cells. Uh, when cells present peptides on their MHE class 1 molecules, to the T cell receptor on the surface of cytotoxic T cells. If these are non-self peptides, if these peptides have come from uh, viral proteins or bacterial proteins, or these can even be uh, cancer proteins. So if you think about uh, proteins that are mutated in cancer, well, if you're presenting those mutant proteins, pep the peptides isolated from mutant proteins to cancer to uh, T cells, it is quite possible that you are presenting something that T cells have never seen before. So they are not um, identifying this as a self molecule. They might actually identify this peptide as a non self molecule. So cancer peptides can be identified as non self molecules. Either way, that's a whole separate immune system video, which you can learn about in, on uh, some of my other videos. But when cytotoxic T cells identify a target cell to kill, as you can see on the left, we had engagement, it, it could engage fast ligand to fast receptor that can t target death of the target cell. And there's an, one more way that cytotoxic T cells kill target cells. So if you identify the peptide using the T cell receptor, then cytotoxic T cells release um, porphyrins, which uh, make a pore into the target cell and release a substance known as granzyme B into the target cell. So granzyme B is actually a protease. And its substrates are procaspase 8 and procaspase 10. And it will cleave procaspase 8 and 10 into their active forms. So uh, cytotoxic T cells have two different ways to signal uh, destruction of a target cell, either using the fast ligand or using a granzyme B injected into the cytoplasm of the target cell. Either way, the result is cleavage of procaspase 8 and 10 to the active form 8 and 10, which are in fact proteases. So those are just some examples of signals that can come from outside a cell that go into a cell that can trigger apoptosis. So now let's jump to what do caspase 8 and 10 do? Now that they have been cleaved, and we mentioned these are initiator caspases. So if you uh, watched the previous video, we talked about these proteins known as executioner caspases, such as caspase 3, 6, and 7. And when they are synthesized, they are in their pro form. So these are proenzymes, they are zymogens, and in their pro form, they are inactive. Well, if the cell has been signaled for destruction and the signal came from outside the cell, that's the extrinsic pathway. Now caspases A and 10 are active proteases. Their substrates are in fact procaspases 3, 6, and 7. So if you compare this to the intrinsic pathway discussed in a previous video, uh, 
in that pathway, in the intrinsic pathway, we had caspase 9 being the uh, initiator caspase, and caspase 9 will cleave pro-caspase 3, 6, and 7 into the active form. In the extrinsic pathway, we have, pro, we have caspase 8 and 10 acting as the initiator caspases, and they are going to cleave the inhibitory domain off of these caspases, allowing them to form active caspase 3, caspase 6, and caspase 7. And as we talked about in the previous video, what are caspases? Caspases are proteases. So caspase 3, 6, and 7 will now go on to cleave proteins. And in fact, there are hundreds of proteins that these caspases cleave. And again, caspases 3, 6, and 7 are known as executioner caspases. And we'll talk about in a later video the substrates for caspases 3, 6, and 7. And those substrates, when they are cleaved, they result in the destruction of the cell, the destruction of the nucleus, the destruction of the DNA, the destruction of the cytoplasm. So executioner caspases carry out the execution of the cell. The initiator caspases will activate the executioner caspases.